One of the most fascinating features of life on Earth is that they run on a biological equivalent of a computer code, or what we call genetics. These are tiny building blocks that dictate which proteins get produced and as a result hold the key to all the functions of life. Cracking this code or being able to manipulate it or even rebuild it from scratch is a popular area for study. Understanding genetics and being able to tweak genes may hold the key to treating diseases, improving bioproducts and even tackling plastic pollution. A team of researchers have now managed to grow a single cell of Baker's yeast which has more than 50% synthetic DNA that survives and replicates similarly to wild yeast strains. In this episode, I tell you all about what synthetic DNA means, why scientists have been working for over a decade to develop it and what it could mean for the future. I am Omna Basu and this is Pure Science. In a series of research papers published in the journals Cell, Molecular Cell and Cell Genomics, a global consortium of researchers working to develop the first synthetic eukaryote genome from scratch presented the half-synthetic yeast as part of the Synthetic Yeast Genome Project or SC2.0. The team has now synthesized and debugged 16 yeast chromosomes. A chromosome is a long DNA molecule with part or all of the genetic material of an organism. Bacterial and viral genomes have been synthesized previously, but these are prokaryotes or single-celled organisms. Bacterial genomes are typically much smaller than yeast genomes. Most bacteria have genomes that range from a few hundred thousand to few million base pairs, whereas yeast has a genome size of around 12 million base pairs. This greater size means there is more genetic material to synthesize and manipulate, making yeast genomes more complex. Before I explain any further, let's understand what base pairs are. Base pairs are the building blocks of the DNA molecule, which carries the genetic information in all living organisms. DNA consists of two long chains of nucleotides and each nucleotide is composed of three components, a phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar molecule and a nitrogenous base. The nitrogenous bases in DNA are adenine or A, thymine or T, cytosine or C and guanine or G. The structure of DNA is a double helix with the two chains running in opposite directions and held together by hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases. These bases form the pairs with specific complementary partners. Adenine or A pairs with thymine or T. This is known as the A-T base pair. Cytosine pairs with guanine. This is known as the C-G base pair. The complementary base pairing is a fundamental feature of DNA structure. It ensures that the two strands of DNA double helix are complementary and fit together like a puzzle, which is essential for DNA replication and information transfer during processes like transcription and translation. The sequence of these base pairs along the DNA molecule encodes the genetic information with specific sequences of A, T, C and G, representing the instructions for building and functioning of an organism. This genetic code is the basis for the diversity of life as different sequences of base pairs in DNA determines the unique traits and characteristics of different species and individuals. The team wanted to understand the first principles of genome fundamentals by building synthetic genomes. By rewriting the operating system of the budding yeast, the team has opened up a new era of engineering biology. Genetic engineering is nothing new. For decades, scientists have been working on targeting sections of the genetic code of living organisms to change their behavior or express some desirable traits in crops. But this advance moves from just tinkering a handful of genes to design and construction of entire genomes. The synthetic yeast is a designer genome that differs substantially from the natural baker's yeast genome on which it is based. To do this, the researchers remove chunks of non-coding DNA that do not translate into any proteins and repetitive elements that could be considered as junk and added new snippets of DNA to help them more easily distinguish between synthesized and native genes 
and introduced a built-in diversity generator called Scramble that shuffles the order of genes within and between chromosomes. Since the yeast genome is organized into 16 chromosomes, the researchers began by assembling each chromosome independently to create 16 partially synthetic yeast strains that each contained 15 natural chromosomes and one synthetic chromosome. The next challenge was to begin combining these synthetic chromosomes into a single yeast cell. To do this, the researchers interbred different partially synthetic yeast strains and then searched among their progeny for individuals carrying both synthetic chromosomes. Though effective, this method is very slow, but the team gradually consolidated all previously synthesized chromosomes, six full chromosomes and one chromosome arm into a single cell. The resulting yeast strain was more than 31% synthetic and had normal morphology and showed only slight growth defects compared to the wild type yeast. To more efficiently transfer specific chromosomes between yeast strains, the researchers developed a new method called chromosome substitution. As a proof of concept, they used chromosome substitution to transfer a newly synthesized chromosome resulting in a yeast cell with 7.5 synthetic chromosomes that is more than 50% synthetic. When the synthetic chromosomes were consolidated into a single yeast strain, the team detected several genetic defects or bugs that were invisible in yeast strains that only carried one synthetic chromosome. Some of these bugs were simply due to the additive impact of having many tiny defects within the genome, while others involved genetic interactions between genes on the different synthetic chromosomes. The researchers were able to map and fix several of these bugs and increase the synthetic yeast fitness by using a method based on CRISPR-Cas9, which is a gene editing tool. The next step will be to integrate the remaining synthetic chromosomes. The ultimate goal of the SC 2.0 project is to completely synthesize the yeast genome, making it a model organism for biological research. This involves designing, building and replacing each of the yeast 16 chromosomes with synthetic versions with the aim of making the yeast more stable, versatile and customizable for various scientific and industrial applications. One of the main motivations behind SC 2.0 yeast project is to better understand the fundamental biology of yeast and to develop a platform for biotechnology and industrial applications. By creating a synthetic yeast genome, researchers hope to gain insights into the genetic underpinnings of the yeast's many applications, including its role in biotechnology, fermentation, processes and biofuel production. Once again, this is Mohana Basu, Senior Assistant Editor at The Print. Do follow us on all social media platforms for the latest news updates.